Hello and welcome to the 301 Speed Reading Screencast. My name's Ollie Johnson. I'm an Academic Skills Development Advisor at 301 Centre for Student Skills and Development. This screencast is designed for all students who have a lot of reading to get through in a short space of time. It's designed to help you to get through an intimidating reading list, but it's important to emphasise that the focus here isn't just on reading fast, it's also about quality reading and getting the information that you want out of your reading material in as short a space of time as possible. In order to make the most of this screencast, you will need two or three readings from your course. So that might be some articles or book chapters, something that you've taken from a reading list, perhaps something that you've been asked to read by a tutor. You'll also need a notepad and a pen and you'll need a watch or a phone, something that's got a timer on it, you can use to time yourself. When you see the 301 clock icon, you can pause the screencast and have a go at an activity that will be outlined on screen. So on successful completion of this screencast, you will be able to use an effective pacing technique to improve your reading speed. You'll be able to read in phrases to increase the amount of information that you can take in in one go. And crucially, you'll be able to get faster and go further in your reading to make the most of the time that you put into reading as part of your independent study. So just a word on the advantages and disadvantages of speed reading before we get started with the session. Research has shown and our experience of teaching this workshop has shown that speed reading techniques can triple your reading speed. Uh, the average UK reader tends to read at a rate of around about 250 to 300 words a minute. Using speed reading techniques can increase that to around about 500 to 600 words a minute if it's done, if it's done well and if it's practiced over a, a long period of time. So speed reading can help you to manage large volumes of reading to get through that reading much more quickly, to use your reading time much more effectively. But, and it's a big but, speed reading is not an approach to reading that can be used for all types and purposes of reading. So if there's something that you need to really read in a great deal of depth, some complex, um, some complex reading involving um, complex theories, complex ideas, uh, speed reading is probably not going to be your answer. Speed reading is most effective as a method for identifying what needs to be read and assimilated in more depth. So it can be a way to approach a sort of preliminary reading of, of some material to identify which parts of that material you might need to go back to. And finally, speed reading takes an awful lot of practice. Just taking this session isn't going to be enough to increase your reading speed uh, significantly. Um, if you use the techniques that we outline in this session uh, over a longer period of time, so over the course of a, a university semester or year, then it's likely that you'll make some dramatic improvements to your reading speed. So I'd urge you to go away and practice these techniques again and again, and hopefully you'll notice a significant increase in your reading speed. So to move on to part one of this screencast, using a pacer. So research shows that our eyes work best when they have something to follow. It helps us to avoid fixations and regressions when we're following a text. So um, the parts of reading where we perhaps don't, uh, our eyes don't flow smoothly through the text, where they jump around, occasionally jumping backwards to reread a phrase or a word that, that we perhaps didn't take in first time round. By using the tip of your pen or your finger as a pacer, it will help to make your eye movement much smoother. It'll give your eyes something to follow through the text. Um, and with that increased smoothness will come an increased speed. As you practice the pacing techniques, you'll find you can move the pacer more quickly through the text. The goal here is not to focus on the pacer itself, but to allow your eyes to use it as a guide. So it's a way to draw your eyes through the text and to gradually increase that reading speed as you draw them through the text in a, a faster and more efficient way. There are a variety of pacing techniques that we can use that range from the basic to the more advanced. Basic techniques include simply using your pen or your finger 
to draw your eyes through the text either by placing your finger under the text or by placing your finger over the text or by running your finger through the text. Now there are also a variety of more advanced pacing techniques that you might want to try. The first of these and one of the most popular is a close S shape. So in this technique we run our finger in a very tight S shape line by line through the text. If that works well for you, you might want to try uh, expanding it into a broader Z shape so that you're zigzagging through multiple lines of the text in one go. An alternative that might work for you is to use a horizontal pen or a ruler or a, a piece of card to um, scan down through the text line by line. And you can practice with moving this this ruler or card um, faster and faster down the lines to draw your eyes more quickly through the text. Another popular technique is to use either your fingers or to hold a pen down either side of the text so that you're not covering up any of the text itself but you're you're doing the same thing you're drawing your eyes down the text with these two parallel markers down the margins. And finally, a, another possible technique is to um, use either a pen or three fingers to um, slide down the centre of the text. Again, not blocking as much of it as you do using the ruler or the, or the card, um, but again, drawing your eyes more, more and more quickly down through the lines of text. So now that we've had a quick run through of some of those pacing techniques, we'll have a go at practising them. You'll need an article or a book chapter related to your course and you'll need uh, a pen and possibly a ruler to try as paces. So have a go at reading your chapter or article. Um, try different strategies for pacing. So try using your finger, your pen or a ruler. Have a go at different techniques including the S shape, the Z shape, horizontal, uh, side and a centre pacing. I'll give you a few moments to practice that. Okay, so now that you've had a go at practicing the pacing techniques, which technique feels easiest for you? Do you think this is something that will increase your reading speed? Again, I'd like to emphasize that this is something that will get a lot easier with practice. So it's something to keep coming back to as you read material associated with your course. So we'll move on now to part two of the speed reading screencast, reading phrases. So as a preliminary to this part of the workshop, have a go at reading the following text. How did you get on? The chances are that although perhaps it wasn't as easy to read as a normal paragraph would be, we can make sense of this fairly easily. Our brains are incredibly good at filling in the gaps, so as long as we can take in a minimum amount of information necessary, we can do the rest of the work in our heads and we can still take the sense, the meaning out of, out of the words, out of the paragraph. So you can train yourself to do this by looking for punctuation in text to distinguish phrases. So looking out for the full stops, the commas, the semicolons and the colons. Or the connectives which mark the break in a phrase. So words like and, of, for, because, but and so on. So by identifying these phrases, these chunks of text that are broken up by these familiar connections, we can train ourselves to read text a phrase at a time rather than just a word at a time. So you can improve this ability, um, first of all, to read by phrases. Eventually, once you've practiced it enough, to read by sentence, sentence by sentence, line by line. So have a go at reading the following text as it flashes on the screen.
So if you were able to keep up with that, that was already 437 words a minute. That's 50% faster than the average UK reading speed. Now let's try again, increasing the speed a little bit further. So that was 741 words a minute. This is already pushing the boundaries of what, it's, what speed it's possible to read at quite significantly. And you'll have noticed that what changed here wasn't the speed at which the phrases were flashing up on the screen, but the length of the phrases themselves. So we're now going to practice reading phrases by having a go at a short activity. So please find a second article or book chapter, something related to your course, something that you, you're intending to read. And we're going to have a go at reading this text, aiming to break it down, uh, firstly, phrase by phrase. So read a couple of paragraphs, trying to pick out the phrases separated by commas, full stops, various types of punctuation and connective words. Then we're going to try reading sentence by sentence, so trying to pick out whole sentences at a time. And finally, we're going to try doing this line by line. So over to you and I'll give you a few moments to have a go at the activity. So how did you get on with this? How did reading by phrase feel compared to your normal reading? Did you find that there were some challenges? Now reading phrase by phrase or sentence by sentence can be particularly difficult if the, the, the text is densely written, written in a, um, a challenging or particularly academic register. Um, so you might want to experiment with different types of texts, um, journalism, um, journal articles, fiction. Uh, see, see how you get on reading different types of texts in these ways. So we're going to move on now to part three and this is where we're, going to, where we're going to start pushing the boundaries. We're going to start reading faster and we're going to start reading further. So uh, we're going to go straight in here with some speed reading exercises, but just a bit of rationale around the particular exercises, first of all. So we've looked at two techniques for reading faster. Now it's time to start training your reading speed. So reading is a physical skill. We're going to treat it like any other kind of physical skill. And this is a chance to push beyond your normal limits so that you feel the benefit when you get back to your normal reading. So this is a bit like learning to drive on the motorway by practicing on an F1 circuit. You're going to be reading faster than is practical, faster than is comfortable, faster than um, faster than a normal comprehension speed. Um, and hopefully when you then get back to a normal reading speed, you'll find that your normal reading speed has increased. Now, just as an important reminder, this accelerated reading is not something that should be applied to all of your reading outside of the session. This is just a way to practice, a way to increase your reading speed. So we're now going to have a go at practicing reading faster and further. So I'd like you to find a third um, piece of reading, something related to your course, um, an article or a book chapter, and we'll have a go at reading that at article at your normal reading speed for just one minute. Once you've done that, I'd like you to add an extra half of the text and mark your new finishing place. So if you've read one page, you'll be reading one and a half pages next time. Then read again from the start and try to reach your goal, keeping inside one minute. So over to you. You can pause the screencast and have a go at that. So now that you've tried reading further in the same amount of time, do you think this has an impact on your level of comprehension of the text? How much further do you think you can read in the same amount of time without having a negative impact on comprehension? This is something that you'll have to experiment and find your own answer to. Now we'll try reading faster. So we'll continue from where we left off in this uh, piece of reading and read again for one minute at your normal reading speed and again mark where you get to. Now we're going to have a go at reading the same amount but in less time. So go back to your original starting point and we'll have a go at reading the passage in first 50 seconds, then 40 seconds, then 30 seconds, and then if you think you can manage it, 20 seconds. So again, 
Pause the recording and have a go at this activity. Now that you've had a go at reading faster, how much does each increase in speed seem to affect your level of comprehension of the material? How fast can you read and still retain the same level of comprehension? Again, this is something that you're going to have to practice and experiment with. So in this session, we've looked at three different approaches to speed reading. We started off by looking at using a pacing technique to improve your reading speed. We moved on to look at the process of reading in phrases or chunks to increase the amount of information that you can take in in one go. And we finished by looking at ways to practice getting faster and to go further in your reading, to make the most of your reading time, to read more efficiently. Um, if you want to practice some skills related to speed reading, uh, we have workshops available via the 301 workshop program. Uh, so you might be interested in the reading for memory workshop, a note taking workshop or an academic writing workshop. We also offer one to one study skills tutorials and we have online support available via the Academic Skills Hub. So please visit the 301 website to find out more. Thank you very much for taking this screencast and good luck with getting through all the reading on your course.